This is the Get Vocal Podcast. Welcome back to the podcast. Massive thank you very much for, again for all the support on the previous episodes. Today, we've got the CEO of the Community Trust, Mr. Ash Hackett. So, welcome to the podcast. First and all, introduce yourself. Thanks, gents. Uh, yeah, I'm Ashley Hackett. I'm uh, Chief Exec of Black Plus C Community Trust. Nothing more else to say. We can introduce myself. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so we're going to jump straight in. What well, before you do, okay. can I just say a massive thank you to you guys? Um, probably doesn't get said enough, um, but we really, really appreciate the efforts that certainly you three, because uh, there is three, there's one as well just behind the camera. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Face the camera. The effort and the and the the, you know the the work that's being done here is absolutely incredible and we're really really proud to be associated with this and honestly it's really really appreciated so just want to say a massive thank you to you guys appreciate it that's that I'm cry. Right, we'll, done. Done. Hey, <laughs> we'll leave it there <laughs> so we always no. start the, uh, <laughs> we always start I'm every crying, year. i'm crying now <laughs> <laughs> i know yeah I feel like the tables have turned yeah. <laughs> so we, we always yeah. start every episode with the same question um because obviously everything, we, we know why we're here and, and obviously the, the importance of it, but what does the term mental health mean to you? And whatever that is, tell us what you what you think that means. What, is, what does it mean to you when you hear that that term? Try and summarise it if you can. Okay. Um stumped. No, I don't think I'm stumped. I think it's, I think it's changed quite significantly for me recently. Um, and I always try and put things in an analogy it's a bit cheesy in that way at times. I think mental health is so important, and I think that sounds really cheesy, but I think what I mean by that is, is if you thought about you know, maybe an aeroplane, for example, and the thing that works, the most important part of an aeroplane is the engine, yeah? And that's probably our heart in our body, isn't it? Because it keeps us ticking, it keeps us going. The plane doesn't fly if the controls and all the stuff that's in that pilot's box doesn't work. And I think for us, it's the same as a person. And if your mental health isn't in a position that's really, really healthy and you're in a position where you're able to focus clearly, I don't think anything works. So for me, mental health is really, really important. And I'm looking a bit nervous because Jack's looking at it like I'm mad. That No, that... (laughs) I've never ever thought of it like that, but it's a great analogy because we've always no, said. Right. You no, because you've always said you can have a good he- if you've got good physical health, but it's the the overall yeah, the overarching yeah, yeah. thing is the fact that your brain powers the body. But then to hear it as an aeroplane, it's no, I got, my eyes have been opened, and I feel like that's a great analogy. No, it is because you're talking about two different things, aren't you? You're talking about physical, as in like yeah, the engine, the heart, the the physical well being of someone can be there. Um, but the signals, the hormones, the thoughts, feelings, for example, um, it is completely different. As I think as well, we 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 always think about physical health, don't we? We think about we're going to get our weight down. I need to do this. I need to do that. I need to look good in the t shirt I'm wearing. It's hard to sometimes see mental health as well, and and you, sometimes you can. Um, but yeah, that that's probably what I'd say. It's it's quite well, important. It's extremely important for us to just function really and. Yeah, so it's in terms of the health, so obviously we were just talking on the on the previous episode, weren't we, in terms of uh, having health is one of those things that can be bad, good, you know, average, let's say, for example. So, I mean, when it, when it's health, it, the well-being term on the last episode was interesting in terms of it, you can have it where it's, you're trying to look at the positive sides of it. Health, we're not in, use the term mental health in a negative way, don't we? In terms of someone, if someone has mental health problems, it'll usually be negative, for example. But it can actually be a positive thing also as well. You can have good, positive mental health and other things that we're trying to do here. We're trying to obviously promote that as well, which is interesting. So, I mean, that's quite... Um... Yeah, I'm, I'm still a bit blown about the end. The, I love a good analogy, but the plane... Very well, simple. Yeah. Just like, oh my God. Very plane. simple, wow. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna look. I'm gonna look out the window tomorrow. That like, my mental health. Um, I was just talking about playing. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Gone five minutes in. Brilliant. So just briefly explain what you do, what the impacts and decisions that you make on the community. Obviously, without you, this would be a thing. Let us in here. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's it. Let's 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 talk about you. Pick yourself up. Big dodge up. Um. I mean, my job is obviously to lead the organisation and work with a board of trustees to set a strategic sort of direction for the charity for a period of time. And then I'm really lucky that I've got an 
uh, it's, again, going to sound really cheesy, but I've got an unbelievable team that then get behind that vision and drive it. And it's very rare that I then have to really drive something forward because they do it themselves. Um, but that's probably the the main part of what my role is. It's about understanding the local need, understanding where we can have a genuine impact. We're not interested in doing bits and doing things okay. We need to be best in class. It's a, a term that we use a lot in the whole of the football club. And the only way you can genuinely have an impact is if you are best in class at something and then you deliver it to the best of your ability. So... My role is probably a, mainly around challenging, making sure that A, the internal team do that, and then B, working with local, national, regional partners to link in and give us money to deliver those provisions because, unfortunately, there's, there's you know, it, it's getting harder and harder, but we've got a lot of wages to pay. And wage bill's probably about 200 grand a month now with over 100 staff and and that is probably the the main responsibility I have to take on to make sure that the the money's coming in and there's not too much going out. Again, probably the biggest one of the other biggest parts of my role is is the synergy and link with the football club, making sure that we're working together, we're working in the right direction and the same direction. Um and then probably a lot of the time as well, it, it, it's probably being a bit of a fire extinguisher. If there's a problem, it <laughs> tends to be a knock on my door. Ash, yes, on your do desk. And, <laughs> yeah, it's not often. It's not often because, like I say, the team are brilliant. But yeah, in in a in a really sort of quick cooks of probably what I do, it's it's that I'm really lucky. No day is ever really the same. <laughs> probably unlucky as well, well at so times because yeah. I really like a routine, and 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 that that changes, but. Probably putting it in a real quick nutshell, it's about making sure we've got an organisation here that A, the town and, and our fans can be really proud of and and is serving our our community to to live happier, healthier lives. I was going to say, like, what, what, what are the main aims and objectives of it? And you kind of just summarised it there, but maybe just elaborate a little bit more on that in terms of you've spoken about the culture that you've got within the team, but where do you drive that, like, in all the different elements of what you do? What is the main, like aim and objective of, of the whole trust in general really that it's about supporting the residents of blackpool mm -hmm. to be able to live the happiest healthiest life that they can live whether that's physical mental health because there's so and many different aspects isn't there there's there like, is yeah but it's also being um brave at times and and going and and getting involved in things that aren't the easiest of things to do mm -hmm. you know you think about some of the provisions that we have like a an independent school for the kids who are at the, 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 you know, real risk of being excluded from school. You think about the mentoring that some of our guys do working in, you know, people who are just being let out of the cells or kids who are really at risk of getting involved in real negative behaviours. It's not just about a bag of balls on a field and playing a bit of nice footy. Um, it's about being brave and making sure that we can go and do things that are going to have a genuine impact. But it's also being brave and making sure you know where you, where you fit and what, what you should be doing yeah, and what you can do and don't try and do things that probably are outside of our values and our mission and kind of outside of our expertise. So are we going to go and build a plane? No. Mm -mm. But, you know, we, we'll, we'll support After that analogy, mate, I think we will. <laughs> <laughs> but it's, 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 it's about making sure you understand where, where you fit as well and, and, and that's probably the thing that times where we've had to be quite challenged on certain areas or, or or have to be sort of honest and go, that's not us. But do you know what? This organisation are really good at that. And that can be difficult at times when I talk about how hard it is to find funding that you kind of go in, that £100,000 would be really beneficial, but we're not going to, we're not going to utilise that. Yeah. I mean, that, that, that level of stress, it must be horrendous but like that really links me on to the next, the next question so thanks um how do you manage your own mental health like i mean how do you zone out because obviously like you say some days can be really hard like you say you've got over 100 staff you've obviously some days you might have 30 problems out of the 100 how do you find chance to zone out how, what do you do in your or is it, is it hard is it easy uh, it, it can be really hard at times it can be really really hard uh, I actually started working with a friend who's a, a professional life coach about 
18 months ago. Uh, there was some stuff going on in my own personal life that was making things really, really difficult and uh, probably wasn't looking after myself to the best of what I should be. And as a husband and, and a dad of two gorgeous girls, probably wasn't being the best for them. Um, and he he worked and still works with me now where it's about finding sort of zones for yourself if you like and you know he came up with a, a a thing for me it was around you know accept the things that you cannot change be brave enough to change the things that you can and have the knowledge to understand the difference in the two one of our staff who was with us for a few years who's, who's moved on now unfortunately he went back down south but he used to say to me all the time ash control the controllables mm. so you hear that quite a lot it's quite i think a yeah, popular term that is. yeah especially in in when you're in leadership roles you, you kind of feel like you need to be on on everything and 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 sometimes it's about being honest the bits i probably let go as i wasn't exercising enough myself um i wasn't giving myself enough time to zone out so things i do now is i don't really have an out of a, a lunch break for an hour i every time i can and it's not absolutely throwing it down. I get out and walk three and a half miles. A week a year we get here, isn't it? It's every day. I try and get out every day. Yeah. So, but yeah, yeah a, a hood and some waterproof yeah. somewhere. But so three I just walk, buy an umbrella on my office. But um, like, you know, I, I'll, I get out and I put a, an audio book on and I'll zone out. My phone goes onto airplane mode. So I can't be contacted unless it's my wife on an emergency, which isn't. Favourites on an iPhone, the best thing in the world, isn't it? Because yeah. you are in in this day and age now. You're accessible all the time, pretty much, aren't you? That like with with a phone in your pocket, for example, in in that kind of role in which you're in, it's similar to what um, Critch was saying when in his episode. It's very hard to like switch off, even though you might have switched your phone off. Your brain still goes. Brain still still, goes. But the irony still... is now, I, I find that that fifty minutes to an hour I go out is sometimes some of the most creative thoughts I yeah have yeah again. i feel that too yeah there's like you have to almost take a, a step back to then get yeah. back into that mindset yeah and then the other bit i've done is i've 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 bought a peloton bike um you can buy them on on interest free and you can pay it monthly because they are a, an enormous um <laughs> other other uh bikes available there is other bikes available <laughs> unless peloton want to give me another one <laughs> um, um, i'll have one if that's the case <laughs> But the, the reason I did that was, my, you know, a couple of my friends had got them and they said, Ash, you need to do this. And I, and I, for me, it was a case of if I invest in something like that, it's going to make me use it. It's at home, so I don't lose that, you know, I can be working 10, 12 hours in a day. I need to get home. I need to see the kids. I need to put the kids to bed. I need to go and pick my eldest up from dance. I can't go to the gym at 9, 10 o'clock at night. I need to be at home. So having that at home and now actually what I do is the minute I get in the door, I say hello. I get on that, I do 45 minutes to an hour on that, and I come in a different person. Yeah, yeah. Um, like so exercise, but structuring my exercise has been has been probably the biggest thing I've had to do and and and, and build on that. He had me, you know, Johnny also, he had me journaling for a bit, but it didn't really work for me. I've tried that. I, just, I was just about to say that. It's a, it's, a, it's a tough one, that, isn't it? Probably the best update on an Apple device. Yeah, they've just added it. They've just yeah. added the journal section mm. because the one thing that I was taught by my wife, the therapist that I used to see, you journal every day on a hard copy. Anything that's bad that's happened, you rip the piece of paper out, you throw it in the bin. Tomorrow's a new day. Anything that's good, you leave it. Whereas with the Apple one, you can write everything down you could just swipe it to the left if you don't like it. I think that's probably mm. one of the biggest things, especially for mental well-being that Apple have actually introduced because not even just mental well-being, but in general, the journaling aspect is just... I think it gets rid of all that, like... Brain fog. I call it, like, yeah, brain fog or, like, jump, like the jumble feeling of everything. Like, you've got so, much, so many things, like, going through your head. And I think sometimes, if, if you say it out loud, as obviously what we're trying to promote here, sometimes you can, like, speak it and think, hold on a minute, that doesn't even either sound as bad or like now you've started to make sense of it a little bit more, but sometimes you don't always have that option. So yeah, I like journaling, for example, is a massive of it, or I don't know if it's research, it was on X, but they were saying that some of the most powerful businessmen, their biggest ideas have come from the shower. Yeah. And I, do you know what, I'm exactly the same, or... Sure, Steve. Or smallest. Yeah. Was, it, was, it, was it Stephen <laughs> yeah. Bartlett? I think he... Do you reckon he likes Huel, by the way? Because I'm fed <laughs> up of seeing that when I watch him. <laughs> Let me introduce you to flavour of fuel. Yeah, <laughs> you think. Um, but no, like that. The stack time in the shower, like 
even if it's 10 minutes, some of the I best, think it was, yeah. some but, of the best things come out of the shower. But again, that's been a big thing for me is my diet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Making sure I, I'm, I'm a big do you person for structure. Yeah. No, I don't like <laughs> some, Um But I, you know, I calorie count and I use my fitness pal and and and, and use, do a lot of that. And, and it, it, it just this. adds, it just yeah. adds all the structure around that I need that in me. My fitness pal, it tells you, you've not logged your dinner. Yes, I know. I've had a McDonald's. Leave me alone. Let me wallow <laughs> yeah. my own self. I know. I get, <laughs> I get it every day. <laughs> in um, in my job, obviously, being a, a, a PT and a coach, like that is something that it, it's structure, isn't it? And routine. All the things that we're talking about are habits. And that's one thing that I push massively. Um, and when we're talking about mental health, it's like physical mental health, they are synergistic together like i think when we was talking about the two separate entities i think they go hand in hand usually if you are looking after your physical health you then start to then see the benefits of better mental health you start better focus more productivity all that kind of stuff um but i think it does derive from the daily habits of course it does it's also quite a selfish thing yeah which isn't a bad thing Mm. but that was one of the other things that i had to be worked on is be more selfish yeah and i think me taking that hour at lunch having an hour again at night so I'm picking up the phone and yeah. but yeah and like turning my phone off and it's it's having that time to zone out as you say but also then it, it gives you a bit more clarity and it allows for the fog to kind of remove a little it's bit it's that whole times. concentrate number one because if you don't concentrate number one you can't help number two yeah and I think that's one of the biggest things like I've had to learn the, like the past few years so I've dedicated a lot of the last say four years that we've done this for two three years now you take on a lot of other people's problems and that's great because that's the why we're doing what we're doing but sometimes you sit there and you kind of go especially for me last week i'm like i'm not even thought about my own feelings like what well, i'm down and i'm not even addressed that and to be fair chum rang me on friday and i hadn't spoken to anyone like i'd kind of briefly touched up with my wife rang me on friday and i was kind of like i had a quite a tough week this week like but to be able to tell him it was kind of like that i can concentrate on someone else now and we can talk about someone else's feelings in it. It was just, I like that a lot. So, I mean, it is obviously important and stuff. How how devoted or how kind of a lot of the community stuff that you do here, how do you, what do you get out of that? Like, do you get a sense of pride and like the, the feeling of, I can't believe we've done this, like helping other people. Do you get that same as we do? Yeah. I mean, I'm Blackpool born and bred as well. So this town means an unbelievable amount to me and and I love Blackpool. I genuinely do. And being able to do what I do, of which there's only 92 people in the country that do my job, 72 EFL clubs, 20 Premier League clubs, who have all got a CCO, a charity attached to them. Being able to do it in your hometown, I reckon there's probably a handful of people that are doing that. Mm. And I think it will always mean more where you're from than it will anywhere else. Mm. And it makes it a lot more personal as well as I've said already you know the, the team do unbelievable work and about 90% of our our workforce are from the far coast as well yeah. so it means just as much to and a lot of people that work, that work. Mm. <laughs> yeah me too <laughs> um, <laughs> there's a lot of them especially today on payday <laughs> <laughs> um, but as daft as it is things like that I, I love payday because again, it, you we can all, see. We all love payday. I no, but what I mean by it is, is that you can see. You know, you know. Then that the staff have been looked after as well. Correct. Yeah. Silly things like making sure that everyone was paid appropriately, making sure everyone got paid on time. All these type of little things yeah. it keeps them really, happy as well. So they they then give more yeah, back. Buy into the project. Yeah. And you all buy. Yeah. Exactly. I mean, that. I think so it's about always really for us as well. You know, making sure that we look after our workforce, and hopefully most of us say we do. You've just said something there, like, and I imagine I've never just thought about this now, but you drive home. And you probably see half of the provisions that you have put in place or the team have put in place just on your drive home. Yeah. And that must be quite like a heartwarming or a... Yeah, or even the story. I mean, we've got multiple WhatsApp groups and different things and they're constantly always buzzing and pinging and going. And you look through it and you look at like the social media one we have for people to put stuff in for X and for Insta and all these social media platforms. And you just go through it at times and it's like, wow. Yeah, honestly lot. it's yeah there's there's just always something going on that's just heartbreaking at times but absolute heartwarming that we're trying to have an impact on it because some of our people in Blackpool are really living really difficult lives and it's tough have, isn't it I think Blackpool like, it, but that's the other side of it time, at yeah. times it is sometimes it's genuinely heartbreaking you know some of the stories we see or you know and, and the things that we have to try and support with it's 
it is genuinely heartbreaking. So to be able to have an impact on that is is massive. Mm. I just wish we could have more. Mm. Makes it more valuable, I guess. Yeah. Doesn't it? How do you do that? How do you go more? Funding. Yeah. <laughs> I can do. Uh, um, with, without without yeah. the, the next yeah. strategies for the next four years or. Or is it? Well, Max, we've just Max, written a new strategy. It, it, uh, it's, it'll get released in in <laughs> in a few weeks, months. Um, it's just been signed off today. Um, yeah, more funding at times, but then it's always just about being cleverer as well and braver. And is it maximizing what you've already got? Because you the things that I'm I'm grabbing from you is like the culture. Like everyone wants to, you know, be involved in this process with the get vocal and everything. Everything, all the other um, like programs and stuff that you've got going on, um, you've got that nailed. So like maximizing what you've got, like you've got a really core value there that everyone wants to be here. Everyone's working hard towards one common goal. Yeah, maximizing that as much as you can. Because like obviously funding, you talk about stuff like that is obviously important, but. Um, if the, the right process people. is here on on yeah. correct, then you can't do it. But if and it's the that, biggest you... thing we do. You know, we we go through the all all formal kind of structural stuff we have to do when we're doing any recruitment. But the one thing I always ask staff to do, because obviously I'm not involved in all of the, the interviews we do now, um, is just right at the top of your interview process. One of us, and we know as a staff what that means. But it's then making sure that the people that come in can be one of us and yeah, can have yeah, that yeah. same impact yeah. that you talk about. No, like so yeah, culture is really important for us as an organisation. We try and be quite a, a, you know, a professional organisation, but try and be real. Try yeah. try and try and think about our community that we're dealing with, and you know, we all still have the same issues and concerns that will come up. So you know, let's support each other as well to then support the the, the wider wider community. Talking of culture at the club. And we're going to go back into it. You were here at some some of the toughest times. But to be honest, you were here at some of the toughest times that the club has faced. How did it feel? I mean, how how was it? it was... How long have you been here, actually, first? This is my 13th season. So, yeah, it'll be 13 years in August. A lot of ups and downs, though. <laughs> yeah, a lot of losses. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah the, 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 the story would probably... Um, match some of the roller coasters at the Pleasure Beach and there's been some significant ups and downs and bits where we go upside down and probably go onto the left field and go onto the right so yeah there, there has been some um, extremely challenging times yeah um, you know when you think about a community trust should absolutely be a, the core, a core function of the football club and the football club should be the pride of a town, especially a town like Blackpool, where we are a one, not only just a one football club town, we're a one pro sport team town. Yeah, there's not a lot. You else, know, you think about you going to Manchester, you have multiple football teams, you have rugby teams, you have cricket mm -hmm. teams, you have all these different things. Blackpool, we've got Blackpool FC, and we've got an amazing one in that we've got this tangerine brand. And obviously, there was a a a period where understandably fans needed to boycott and 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 do what they did and it was incredible and we kind of got stuck in the middle of all that really in a way as much as we tried to remain independent we, we were wearing the badge yeah, you know, yeah. And, and staff would go in the shop and they'd, they'd, they'd get oyster out and they'd get the abuse and for no fault of their own but it, it yeah it, it was really tough and i got pelters on on a regular basis and threats and yeah it was difficult it was really difficult and it was it was very much about making sure that we then um then continued to really understand the reason we were doing what we were doing and to try and support our community it was hard because funders would say we can't have the association we had schools that would say we can't have the association and it was about but in a way now, looking back, probably however many years it's been since, it's about six years since. 2019, wasn't it? Yeah, so Simon, yeah, four four years since since the changes and and probably made us really strong, a lot stronger. And, yeah. you know, one of our staff, and it, and it allowed us to really, really understand what our core values were and 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 be doing it for the right reasons. Do you question at the time about is this the right place for me to be long term? And it was always my wife was the driving force on that about you are never going to be in a job that means as much to you as this one. And it was about making sure that you understood that there would always eventually be 
a light at the end of the tunnel and it would be different and it certainly is yeah. um but then the irony was the next one that came was probably then covid yeah unbelievable probably the, one of the toughest periods of my life and i hear some people say oh it was great i was sat home watching netflix and i was you know, and my wife will say things As like... two people who were self-employed, it definitely wasn't. <laughs> no, it wasn't. It wasn't because, it was rough. you know, we talk about, <laughs> yeah. you know, we talk about, and that's why, and again, when you come to sort of talking about, you know, payday's a really good day because you make sure that staff are paid. There was some months where you were like, oh my God, what are we going to do? Before, you know, all the things that they did were furlough and all the rest of it. And then that then became a whiteboard in itself every month. But, but we were really, really focused on making sure that we continue to support our community and didn't really use it to the capacity we probably could have done because it was about supporting the community and, and, and being there. But we had a football club behind us. We had a council behind us. We had the EFL, the Premier League, a load of partners behind us. I think we would all probably agree now that we responded really well in that. We had a group of staff who wanted to go out and do stuff. And I think it was an also a real good opp opportunity for us because we became a food bank here mm -hmm. we were going out delivering parcels to some of the the most deprived people in the town and it allowed staff to see sometimes the other side of what some of our community were living with and and yeah another another really challenging period i think i think especially covid like a year after the takeover like that helped with the hate to use this word because it's a contentious word, phrase but it helped build back better didn't it you you it showed you showed the community what exactly the community trust has been doing for so long yeah. that people probably turn a blind eye to during them tough years. Yeah. It really showed and highlighted the great work that everyone's doing. Not just in it kicked on everything yeah. else from that. Yeah, it, yeah. It really did yeah, to be yeah. fair. I mean, I think, I think there is probably, you know, probably for people who question this, but I don't think there was a third set to charitable organization on the far coast that stood up the way we did. And I'd argue in the CCO network, you know, community trusts, community charitable organizations or charitable community organizations the football clubs charity you know the, the the most of them would come and go how have you done what you did how did you carry on doing what you're doing but it gave us then the platform because of the partnerships we formed in that to be able to really develop and grow from it and support our community even more so yeah probably two they're probably the two most challenging periods um but then sometimes the lows make the highs even better. Mm. And, you know, you think about when we had that, you know, playoff promotion at Wembley and we went back up to the championship when, in the end of that COVID year. And obviously there wasn't a lot of fans that could come, but I, I, my wife's still not forgiving me for it. I, I cried at Wembley and I don't cry about anything. Um, and I think it was almost like it was the end of a specific journey and we kind of got to a certain point and, you know, it made that high even more special. And I think if we could do it again this year, it'll feel the same. Um, yeah, it makes, it, it, it certainly made us a bit thick skinned, a bit more thick skinned. It made us a lot more resilient. Um, it allowed us to really understand who we are and why we do what we do. And as I say, it probably allows us to really enjoy the successes that come a little bit more. And I imagine when you drive, like say before driving home, seeing it in the WhatsApp groups, all them pelters at times kind of make it not worthwhile as such, but it kind of yeah. keeps you refocused and going, no, we are doing a good job. And just because someone's saying this online, it look at the, look at the, yeah. And, and you look at it now, you, you know, you talk about online stuff. There's never really a negative comment that's made about the community trust anymore, you know? And, and I think the town of Blackpool community, you know, the, the statutory organizations, the other partners, the football club, you know, the owner, the board, the directors, the manager, they, they all genuinely now get who we are and what we do and, and not only respect it, but appreciate it. And even nationally, you know, we are seen as one of the best community trusts in the country. And that's not because of the turnover and the amount of staff. It's about the quality of the work that we do. Love it. More, more on like a personal art, how did you... How did you deal with that? Obviously, if it was very stressful, ups and downs, like how did you deal with that feeling personally? Obviously, you're talking more as an organisation, how you dealt with it, but like how did you how did you deal with that situation? Which you bit? Said, all of it. Like, you know, if you think we, even the ups and the downs, because obviously, like you're saying, it's like a roller coaster. Like when you're, at, when you're on the downs, how did you, did you like vision something that there was always going to be a next up or like is that to. what you do? Yeah, yeah it, I think I said, it. you know, it's, it's almost certainly in the first bit with the boycotts and stuff, it was trying to make sure that we knew that there was a light at the end of the tunnel. 
Um, didn't know what that looked like at that point, but um, it was almost about sort of just like digging in, just getting on with it. We had a really good team of people that we just supported each other. You know, I think that was the point where we kind of came up internally of that one team, one trust, which still kind of resonates through everyone about we're all here to help each other. Um, friends talking about it. I've got a really good family network. I've got an extremely understanding wife who knows that there'll be times where I come in and I'm an absolute pig of a mood, but, um, yeah, that is important. Just being though. honest. Yeah, that is important. Thing. I think the support network, when that was cropped up again in, in so many episodes, I think in terms of um, who you've got around you, the one that we obviously just done prior, um, I think that's key because you can be in that down period or you can be in that um, period where things are tough. If you're looking around and you've got no like no positive influence, no one there to help you, no one there to, whether it's at work, at home, yeah. in a peer group, at the uh, Get Vocal sessions, there is like, you need hope, don't you? That's what I'm trying to get at. Like, you need someone to just go, look, it's all right, mate. Like, I know it feels a bit, but it's going to be all right. And sometimes you'll need that. Or you can do it on the flip side where you can be that person for someone else, I think. And yeah. You might get that a lot in your job, yeah. I guess. Yeah, yeah absolutely. You're someone who comes to you and think, I've got this issue or blah, blah. And you think, look, cool, it's fine. Don't worry. Things are going to be all right. And all, that might be all someone needs to hear, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. I know I need that sometimes. Absolutely. Definitely. I ran yeah. off about stuff and I think, is it actually that bad? <laughs> and then someone will go, no, it's all right, we'll sort it. And then that's it. Then your whole mindset changes on it. Yeah. And I think, I think again, you know, really supportive parents and, and we're always really good at kind of helping me see things in perspective at times. And, mm -hmm. and maybe that's it. Is that because it's someone outside of yeah. like this? You Absolutely. Know what I mean? yeah. yeah. Someone with a different set of like, like a yeah. no bias yeah, opinion as such. That, there you're the son. You're not the boss. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, that and that. Yeah, and that's, it almost it can, yeah. turns on its head a little bit. And then from a COVID point of view, just my girls, just my daughters, you know, were just, they just, both of them are just a bundle of energy all the time. You know, they're now four and 12 and they just, they just had a perspective to things at times where, again, don't let your highs get too high, don't let your lows get too low because at the end of the day, the the biggest job I've got in the world is daddy. Mm. And as long as they're smiling Separated and they go home course. at night and, and they're safe. And that was one of the things that my wife talks about regularly when we talk about COVID. She enjoyed the period because she said every night she went to bed feeling safe. Yeah, the yeah. four of us in the house were safe. We didn't have everybody else around as well, which was always good, but... <laughs> um, I think it was that as well. I think it was just trying to put things in perspective and make sure you understood always what the actual things are, are genuinely important. The job's really important. Don't get me wrong. It, it is unbelievably important and I'm so proud to have it. But, you know, the biggest job I've got is making sure that those kids are happy and they're, happy and they're set and they're going to do amazing things when they get older. Did you do the Joe Wicks workout every morning? No. No, I was on Zooms. <laughs> Honestly, I probably never worked harder in that period. It was horrible. It Talk. was genuinely horrible. Yeah. It was. And now here you are. Yeah. yeah. But speaking, speaking. Going out walking and going on my bike. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Um, so recently you've obviously been through some personal struggles yourself and I would like you to potentially, you know, elaborate on that a little bit if you wouldn't mind and just maybe go into how you may be dealing with that and, and how maybe if anyone else is going through something similar, um, what they can do and how you've managed to deal with it. Uh, yeah. Um, 2023 was ironically, probably personally the, the toughest year in my life. There was loads of things going on, but the main part was me. I lost my dad in the summer. Um, and for the two years prior to that, my dad had been an alcoholic and, um, the impact was, was, is, enormous um and living through somebody else going through what they were going through was unbelievably difficult and i don't think i ever really understood um the impact or the void that would have been left when when he finally went and yeah it's been i'll be honest it's been horrific mm -hmm. um and it wasn't like me and my dad were like the most the closest of two in the sense of we spoke every we didn't have a lot in common in the sense of he didn't like football he didn't ever came to the footy or anything like that and but we probably spoke four or five times a day we'd, we'd see each other regularly and and in the last two years it was then very much about 
dad how do we get through this come on and he he'd he, he, he'd give up towards the end unfortunately and that was absolutely heartbreaking but i don't think i fully understand ironically i barely think about those two years now um which was the reason i actually had to start seeing john you know the life coach to, to try and put some perspective in that because i did become quite ill about two christmases ago with the burden of it all and mm. kind of feeling a, a responsibility and that's why that affirmation is kind of really important because i couldn't i couldn't change it i tried mm. my brother trying you know my, my stepmom is her step her daughters and my dad's stepdaughters we, we all tried and we would try and use our kids as a a reason to 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 change the trajectory he was going on but the the loss has been greater than i ever expected um and the void is unbelievable uh if i'm honest and it's been it is still really really difficult to cope with if i'm honest um yeah so the last six months of trying to put that into some form of perspective has been um it's been a real challenge um and then you start thinking about all really deep stuff about oh my god i'm gonna do this to my kids one day hopefully because it should always be the you know the parent that goes before the kids shouldn't it but um yeah again had just really good people around me at work um Fortunately, my mum lives in Spain, so whilst my mum's always on the phone, she was over in no time to be here. Um, again, my wife, who lost her dad at a really young age, so was able to... Und I don't think you actually understand it until you've been through it. Mm. And, and having Lindsay, who had been through it in a much sort of earlier stage and probably a really difficult process because it was pretty instant for Linz and her brother um, and family, but... Just having the right people around me, you know, probably one of the toughest things was Sienna, my, my youngest daughter, would ask sort of, where's granddad? Yeah, when's yeah. granddad coming home from heaven? And when he feels better, will he come back? And trying to explain it to her when you didn't really understand it yourself was 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 really But you try and put, you try and almost your best to do that, don't you? I guess Yeah. You, yeah. What do you do in that situation? It's, yeah. It's difficult. Rebuilding the structure around myself and making sure I got out and did certain things. And that's when I bought the bike, ironically, because yeah. I felt like I needed to do something for myself at that point. It was pushed on me by one of my close friends and Lindsay, ironically, on my birthday, they were like, right, get it ordered now. Come on, get mm. yourself sorted. Mm. Mm. It's time to do something for yourself. Um, it's helped, certainly helped, but it's not. It's I don't, not uh, yeah, I, don't, I think what I don't you're think saying, what I'm getting from that, you're saying, uh, obviously those things um, you're using from the reflection point of view of how you feel you're trying to do something better about it. It's never going to necessarily fix the, no. the loss. That's always going to be there. But yeah, I think how you deal with it is different. And with that's again cropped up as a massive part of life is always going to throw things like that. You know, we know certain things are going to happen, but you don't necessarily know when or what might happen, whether it's illness with certain people or anything can happen at any moment. Um, but dealing with it and then learning how to deal with it. Do you feel like you're in that, that process now is in terms of like, you might not still, you might not be able to deal with it as such as it's not going to change, but do you feel like you're positively making steps with the, even little, little things like the bike and taking the walks? Do you feel like you're getting there with it now? Yes and no. Um, I think, I think before you go through it, you kind of think about the stages of grief. I can't remember how many years now. Was it seven? I think it's seven. Seven stages of grief. And you kind of think, well, I'll go through stage one. I'll go through stage two. It's like acceptance. Yeah. Like, but that's like yeah. later, don't it's even like Acceptance, yet. denial. There's one regret in there as well. Yeah, I can't remember. I know there's seven though for definite. I know an acceptance. But you don't, it's not like a staircase. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's not. Go, you actually just go back. back yeah. and, and, and you go like that throughout. And, and, and sometimes the best thing that happens to you makes you feel really upset about it because you think, yeah. oh, I'd love to be able to tell my dad about that. Mm. You know, you talked earlier about when I'd drive home and I'd see the provision. That was one of the times where I'd have the longest chat with him in the day. I'd phone him on the way home. You know, it's about a 20-minute walk drive from here if I'm lucky and the lights aren't on the prom, um, <laughs> to get home. Um, but that would be the time where I'd probably have the longest conversation with my dad. And, and now it's kind of having, I don't want to fill that with someone else on the phone. Yeah. 
but I also need to find something to do in that time Bit where it's void. not. Yeah, so, so that that drive is always really is is still quite difficult at times. Hmm. So there's there's something you just you said there, and it's something I've struck a struck a chord with there straight away. I used to phone my granddad, and when he passed, I was like, I always used to try and find to fill the void because you don't want to be set in your own time when you. And there was the one thing that you've always said is that sometimes you've got to use that time to sit in your own sit mind in space. It, yeah, yeah, and it's like. I've said that to you loads of times. Like, right. like, no, I, no, no, <laughs> no. I mean, like, not somebody else. Not a obsession for me. I think it. No, it is interesting, but I know what you're trying to say. It's like, but it, it is like you do. You fill the void, and the thing is, like you said, there subconsciously, there's something like you don't. It's it's almost that you don't want to replace it. it it's like it's, that's a that's an stage of acceptance of grief because you don't want to replace it because they think if I fill that time, that's gone. That won't yeah. mean anything to me now. Yeah. Well, you have got to take that time to sit in your own thought and process what you're feeling and that time is just your time now moving forward and it's I do think that that not being or change to, it to a positive as in like find another yeah no, you know, no it doesn't not, I yeah, get it but, but it takes time that doesn't it but that, that's a big part of grief and I think something you've said there and I'm, I do it on a daily basis and it's not about me this so I apologise but you do find yourself wanting to tell people that aren't here anymore certain things that are in your life and you kind of go can't do that mm. can't yeah do that. and it was early doors as well there was there was like silly things where i'd be like oh just ask my dad and you hit the phone and be like what what are you doing and then you beat yourself up and mm. then why are you making yourself upset now by not remembering or just having that automatic i'll just ask my dad and yeah it, yeah it's well, your um, entire life you've had you've had that i mean that's what i mean like so it's, it's just instant decisions isn't it i guess that's tough to then deal with yeah it, it has it's it's been um it is really difficult. It is genuinely really difficult. And what I was going to say, what we're doing here now, talking about it for you, yeah. Um, you know, other people that are experiencing, whether it's a similar kind of um, problem that they've dealt with, or we've, you know, we've spoken about addiction on this, we've spoken about retirement with with Brian stuff like that. Um, and that's what, not gone long, has it? No, yeah. <laughs> Cheers, mate. Yeah, we're <laughs> just waiting three weeks. To <laughs> we'll do another one. Do we'll it. do another. As soon one. as we released it, <laughs> within three hours, that was on social media, and then your video was there as well. <laughs> we look like idiots. Yeah, <laughs> you sat there for an hour saying you were happy in retirement. Please don't change me. <laughs> um, but no, I think that must give you so much pride because, like, you've been there. And you now you know to a point how people feel who come to the section like so to see how get vocal is becoming what it's becoming mm. must fill you with immense pride because you've been in to, to a point into people who come to the session shoes as well yeah and i think i think it comes back to that initial point about what is mental health and i think i said at the beginning now that i think it's changed a lot for me in the last few years and it's probably because of that really you know the, 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 try and make sure that everything i experience i try and utilize it in some way to make myself a better person um there was a lot of mistakes my dad made and it's again making sure that i don't make the same mistakes i'm absolutely there for everything that my girls need even if i don't like it you know dance mainly um like dance it. is fantastic physical activity you, you like um, it. <laughs> spoken, like a, spoken like a true ceo who had to cover his back <laughs> um there are other provisions of private <laughs> yeah. um yeah it, it it it's still really really difficult and I think it's a, a an area of probably mental health that we don't acknowledge enough. Um, grief deals with people. I think grief deals with people as opposed to people deal with grief mm. in very different ways. And the problem as well is it can hit you straight away or it could hit you in six months. It can hit you at any point and it can continue to hit you. It's just almost finding your coping mechanisms and, and, and finding the right ways to do it and, and being not being too proud in that if you're going to be upset, you're going to, it's going to affect you. Mm. Just, just get on with it. Just try and find the right way to support yourself really. And again, be selfish because like it's hard. It's really the, hard. The things that you're, all the things that you're talking about are like ways in which that you can turn that negative into a positive. So like you're saying all these things that you've tried to change with your life 
and your habits and all those things. Now you're paying more attention to. So you are, you, you're in a positive position where you're using it in a, there's two sides of the coin. You can go one way with it and go really negative, but yeah, it seems as if you're using it in a positive way. Yes, it's still affecting you, but you're actually thinking about it in a way where I'm going to try and avoid going down that road. I'm going to go down the road of health and trying to positively impact it. Like I said at the beginning, there's two different sides of it and you're going down the, Hopefully. the right route. Yeah, and and I was probably the stereotypical guy that wouldn't talk to people about my problems or how I was feeling and... um you know, last couple of days, if I'm brutally honest, have been really hard. And, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, when I finished my walk today, I picked the phone up and phoned Lynn's my wife and, and told her I was feeling a bit crap again. And, you know, she's reacted in the right way. Spoke to one of my pals who we disconnected a few years ago and, you know, as part of all this, just when my dad was ill and we reconnected. And my dad was really happy that we did. He was best man at my wedding. 400 years ago and um, you're looking well for it I <laughs> appreciate that <laughs> them walks are doing you good <laughs> that, that's me trying to cover work out how many years actually it's 15 it's 15 um, yeah fan answer my wife's the same we she can edit it mate yes. <laughs> there's, a, um, there's AI now we, we voice that says 17 it's 15 that's 15 it's 15 years um and, you know, he was so happy that we'd reconnected. But again, he'd been through the same. He lost his dad a year before and it was having people around me that, that had been through it. And But again, it's opened me up to be able to talk again and, and, and or not again, to, to talk properly now and be honest and just be open about it. I couldn't have done this. What well, you did? Well, well, I hate being in front of camera for, for anything for work. I, I just always feel really, it's not, it shouldn't be about me. It should be about the community trust and the amazing staff who do it. Um. Obviously, Brett's kind of put my arm behind my back and got me in here tonight. But um, get in there. <laughs> How the yeah. tables turn? <laughs> yeah, pay back tomorrow. Don't yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. <laughs> you're on everything tomorrow. Now. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Declined. Yeah. <laughs> I hope the microphone picked that up now. But um, no, but uh, yeah, it's it's about what Stephen was saying. There wasn't it? Like that lived experience. And drawing off people who are around you and drawing off... You literally just said it, like like finding someone else that has been through what you... Yeah. You said exactly the same thing. Yeah, yeah. And, and, and the irony is, is we've all been through it or going to go through it. So, it, you know, certainly with grief, it's about... And it doesn't have to be your parent. It could be your best friend. It could be your dog. It could be everyone will be affected with grief in one way or another. And it's just looking after yourself when it comes because it's coming unfortunately so yeah. it's to be a bearer of bad news but there is some Damn. element <laughs> well, no no it's true you know yeah, yeah. you're gonna lose someone who's specialty at some but then again if no one if if nobody talked about it or nobody shared the, the, the thoughts and the feelings and everyone would experience it but nothing would change as in like no one would be able to help themselves with it or help someone else with it so that's the key part isn't it is yeah. sharing what's going on in your head or what you're even feeling sometimes. It might not even be able, like you're actually making sense of what's going on in your head, but you feel something. You, know, yeah, you, might, you might feel a bit down. You might not want to go out for the walk and you can't necessarily like understand what's going on. Um, it's not but you triggers. feel that. Yeah, yeah. And I, I'm, I'm in tune with that quite a lot, quite a lot in terms of my own um, things. And I feel it straight away more so than I make sense of it. Um, but then habits like training, all these things that we're trying to encourage people to do, talking, training, you know, taking space out and all that kind of stuff, like they're really important. But if you're not even in that space yet, mm. what what would your advice be to someone that maybe isn't even in, like you've been in that position before where you said you struggled to maybe open up. What would you, what advice would you give to someone that maybe is thinking that? Because obviously we're in a position now where we're sat and we're talking about it now, but someone might actually be listening going, I'm not even at that point yet. Do you, do you know what I mean? Yeah. What would be the first step that they could take or like, you know, what was the don't, first step you don't, took? Don't or? be too proud. Yeah. Don't don't think it's a sign of weakness to actually talk about your, you know, your, your feelings. Mm-hmm. Um, it's actually the polar opposite. It's not a sign of weakness, actually. It's a real sign of strength to be brave enough to be able to go and talk about yourself. Nobody really likes talking about themselves. Eh, maybe somebody. Um, but, you know, to talk about honest kind of what you what you're going through what what bravery courage they're all the words bravery and courage really it it is it's not a sign of weakness it's not and and but also don't put pressure on yourself to do it you know do it when you feel ready and you feel comfortable to do it you know 
know it's there, know that there's groups out there. You know, we've got some fantastic uh, you know, programs that you can come and link into and it'll help you. You know, a number of our people. Especially say, Monday night, six to eight. Yeah. In the get <laughs> vocal. And again, that's something that we want to develop and grow and, and expand and, 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 and give enough, like give many different platforms for people to be able to use our provision or, or support other provision that's taking place to, to be able to do so. You know. yeah, I guess that leads to the last question, really, in terms of where do you see the future of what is happening here, you know, in terms of the Get Vocal and obviously the trust as a whole, like what is the future? What are the the big goals? What's the next big step for you and this this trust and the organisation? Saying that, you've just signed a new strategy, so can you actually tell us? Yeah. Because I imagine... Do what that... I want, I wrote it. <laughs> <Sneak> <laughs> preview. I'm the boss, I'll do what <laughs> No, no, I'm in it in that way. Yeah. Um, Exclusive. Um... For us as an organisation, the biggest challenge has been facilities. Mm. And I think it probably became an even heightened situation in COVID where we were kind of ready going, let's get out, let's go and help, let's do. And everything was shut. Mm. And you're like, all right, okay, well, let's go out and do what we can with what's available and what's open or how things have been changed. So having our own facilities that we are kind of the, the the gatekeeper and the key holder to be able to open them when we feel appropriate. Mm. We've seen steps of that, what we've done already with the stuff we've done around the stadium. We've got more to come, really, really exciting stuff coming. Um, we've obviously opened the sports hub up at, at Spire, which has been an unbelievable platform for us. We've got some improvements to do up there. I want to do two more. I want one in the north, I want one in the south of the town. Not because I want to be able to say, was at Blackpool FC Community Trust. We've got these four amazing facilities that we're doing, but we want things, we want facilities that our community, our participants are comfortable to come to. Not everyone's comfortable to go into a big leisure centre or a, a big college, if you like, mm -hmm. and having those more um, community-focused facilities where where our participants, our community can come and engage in activities is, is really important to me. Um that's that's a real driver for me um as an organization and you talk about get vocal mental health we need to be doing more we need to be doing more of everything that we do i don't it's pretty think much just to start this isn't it i think yeah yeah it is yeah, and, we need to build on that you know we, we, we do a monday night well everyone's mental health isn't just affected on a monday night yeah, so yeah. it's how do we get to a point where it's we more have accessible and accessible across the town we've got a lot of the community that struggle to travel so mm. there's a lot of our community that can't access the stuff we're doing here at the stadium and it comes back to those facilities really so yeah. um we will do more. We will do more podcasts. We will do more get vocal sessions. We will have more physical activity that has a real focus on mental health. We will have stuff for young people focused towards that, like what we do already within schools, but more of it. We will have more stuff for the adults. It's about doing more of what we do because we do it really well. Yeah. So it's not necessarily always about reinventing the wheel. It's just keep doing on more of it yeah more. we've got some really exciting stuff coming as well with esports and and lots of other other provision that we've got coming up which is really exciting it's always about what's next you know i always think next year year before you know year keep after, thinking forward be, yeah well my board's there you can see we've got stuff that we're thinking about for 2026 2027 mm. you know it's vision yeah you've got a vision you've got a you've got like a vision. Stay stagnant, you? you just stay still or you go backwards. I feel like we're in the middle. I feel like we're in in the middle of an analogy. Analogy. You crap with analogies. You're crap with analogies. I I'm love just, a good analogy, mate. I know you do. But you I'd, str I'd love the str words. Yeah, it's been fair. Yeah. I laughed. I laughed when Critch. You're still thinking about it. You're still thinking yeah. about that plane. He's like, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, honestly though, I, I do like you can see even just walking in from the car park with the little sessions that have got going on in the in the room down there and, and everything that's going on here. There's so many different little pockets. Obviously, get bulk and all the other bits and bobs. Um, and like I say, where I work as well, there's, there's um, members of staff that you've got here that I speak to on a daily basis when they come to the classes and stuff. And they're always happy, like coming in, they're never coming in moaning about work. Or, That's good to hear. Um, so genuinely, that is like a first-hand experience. So thank you. everyone here is doing really well. Appreciate that. I love it. It's I good. really appreciate it. Thank you. Brett's so, all right you as well. You saved about 100 jobs there. Well done, Carl. <laughs> <laughs> I'll tell you after. Yeah. <laughs> I'll name it Shane later. <laughs> so thank you very much for listening. That is the end of the podcast. Don't forget, if you enjoyed what you've listened to or you've watched, hit the subscribe button and we'll see you next episode. Thank you, mate. Thank you.